down in that dark, damp concrete uh, tunnel at Wembley. There's Mike England, who was doubtful up until this morning. The players having their last moments together in private. And there'll be moments of anxiety, moments of fear as well. Players have to be keyed up at this point. The Norwich lads already out as well. They've all gone through their various routines, their various superstitions leading up to this moment. Pat Jennings, for example, will have had his top of brandy by now. There was the other goalkeeper, Kevin Keelan. Ron Saunders, the man who really has done so much for East Anglian football over the last uh, couple of years. And if it's all new for Ron Saunders, then for Spurs and for their manager, Billy Nicholson, it's something they've known so often before. Now those last private moments are over, and soon it's a moment to be shared, the whole afternoon in fact, with tens of millions of people here in the stadium and throughout Europe and Africa on television. Bill Nicholson, one of the great managers of our time, leading our Spurs on the left. Some of their team have never even been here. last year and all of them lost so that must give some encouragement to these Norwich lads as they come onto the Wembley turf for the first time in their career to the Earl of Harwood, an honorary vice president of the Football Association and a lifelong supporter, of course, of Leeds United, with Mr Len Shipman on the right, president of the Football League. And other football dignitaries from the Football League behind them. That the teams to present deep the teams to be presented here to the Earl of Harwood. Vice President of the FA, a lifelong supporter of Leeds United, first going along the Tottenham line. Having a word with Mike England, who had that troublesome knee, a knock that he got last week. Cyril Knowles and Martin Chivers here for Spurs in the League Cup final two years ago against Aston Villa. Philip Beale and the substitute Ralph Coates. the turn of Norwich City with their skipper Duncan Forbes Next week's here and, uh, Jim Blair beyond him has only had one full first team game the tall fellow there third from the left <laughs> Jeff Butler and Terry Anderson there 
Lord having a word with Max Briggs. of them have come up from East Anglia to support the Canaries here at Wembley. And now the national anthem. And now the national anthem. catch up on the two teams for this Football League Cup final. On the left, Norwich City, unchanged. Side here that will spoil and fight and do its best to stifle Spurs. Two men mainly in the front, David Cross and Jim Blair. Cross their top scorer with 12 goals. And players like Graham Patton, who scored 10, will be one of the midfield workers for them. And Spurs, the scare with Mike England is over. They too can be unchanged. I suppose the man that Norwich will fear most must be Martin Chivers with five goals in his last five games and has been the top scorer in the Football League Cup in the last two seasons, each time with seven goals. The referee today, the man who refereed the Cup final last season, the FA... The referee today is the man who refereed the FA Cup final last season, David Smith of Gloucester, with his linesman, Mr Thacker of Lincoln and Mr Fly of Pontypridd. Forbes, the Norwich skipper, who in the cup tie against Arsenal had rib injuries and in fact was in hospital for some time and was doubtful for this game, and Martin Peters of Spurs on the right. and on the left of the picture Eddie Bailey assistant manager with the Spurs doctor on the right Ray Evans the disappointed player the full back at the back there and it's going to be Norwich then who are going to kick off
David Smith having checked with both linesmen that all is in order. Norwich get us away. The 1973 Football League Cup final. Knowles putting it straight back to Pat Jennings. Wearing a jersey of uh, royal blue. Norwich defending the goal to our left in their shirts of canary yellow. Green shorts. Spurs all in white. Chivers beaten in the air there by Forbes. Perryman trying to pick up everything that's loose. Knowles the little chip forward. England back to Philip Beale and a long way back for another touch of the ball and Jennings has got to go, stops it going for the corner. Philip Beale who had a long run with injury and was at some point uh, doubtful for this League Cup final. Chivers again, but it's Butler who got the head to it, turns it into touch. Tottenham's throw. season with Ralph Coates for that number 11 shirt it's Pierce who's got it on the afternoon that really matters already seen uh, Pat Jennings from Ireland here's Kevin Keelan who was born in India of Norwich Graham Patton now the ball through to Chivers played back for Perryman and now again for Knowles Kinnear had advanced away on the right and was hoping for the return ball here's John Pratt Knowles going in but Livermore coming away. Back to Payne. And now with Kevin Keelan. Kinnear and uh, Cross both going for this one. And again England showing his leaping power. And Perriman his dogged tenacity. But again it's Norwich City in possession. And here's Philip Beale though. A little too much of that shown, though, to the Norwich defence. Knowles with the header. Back to Graham Patton now. Blair, a nice little touch-off again for Patton, the man who can shoot from uh, quite a distance with power. Patton, who scored ten goals this season, five of them with the most tremendous free kicks. Pierce now. Oh, that fell nicely for Martin Peters. Got Stringer with him, and now Livermore picking up the loose one. So important for Norwich not to concede anything early on to uh, dent their confidence. And here's Blair. Looked to be lacking a little bit in uh, pace there, but he's gone past England. And Kinnear backing off. And Kinnear getting in at exactly the right moment. Joe Kinnear, who probably played the game of his life here in 1967, when Spurs beat Chelsea in the FA Cup. But it's Graham Patton with the throw for Norwich. Oh, now went a long way. Blair almost got a touch there that could have been very important. Jim Blair playing only one full game, a couple of substitutes for Norwich before being picked for this uh, most important League Cup final. Gilzine poised for this one. Pratt chasing it, but into touch, and that must have come off a Norwich player. Chivers. For Pratt. For Chivers. So hard to shake off, a bow, off the ball. A man with such great physical power. Philip Beale. All the time in the world. Perryman. And there's a good ball there to Martin Peters. Turned in again now. Perryman following it right in. And Duncan Forbes getting behind it to nod it away. And it's Livermore now to cross. Turned off. Knowles. That was a little casual. And here's Terry Anderson. Good ball there to Blair. Cross has gone built in through the middle as well. But that was uh, his excitement rather getting the better of him, Jim Blair. Bit of a gamble, really, playing John Bear, Blair. He was a bit of a gamble in the first place. £18,000 from St Mirren. <laughs> Perryman, Gilzine. Nice stab off there for Perriman again. Played good, accurate football there by Tottenham, but there was a foul 
by Max Briggs on Steve Perriman. And a tough midfield worker there, Perriman, getting uh, chopped down by another tough midfield player, Max Briggs. Now it's Knowles. Knowles coming in again. Perriman. Kinnear's gone away on the right for him. And Perryman spotted him well. Cross towards Gilzean again. Pierce is right in there, and it was Peters! And Keelan, if anything, maybe a fraction of a second late in reacting to that one. Spurs at the moment looking the more confident. But such an acrobatic goalkeeper is Keelan. Pratt's header. Chivers, not noted as a good header of a ball for a man of that size. Butler to cross to Graham Patton, and in goes Beale first time, but it's Livermore. Butler again. England's header. Kinnear. Oh, that didn't give Pratt too much of a chance, and he had to bite in there, and he got it. Kinnear now to uh, Gilzean. Pierce, who's looking very lively, but that time Payne was there. By Payne. Knowles a bit finger and thumb there, being uh, harassed by Jim Blair. And it's the throw to Norwich City. Terry Anderson, number 11. Leaving it instead to Clive Payne. Blair to come closer. And in fact, Blair getting ahead to it, but only by pushing in on the uh, Spurs defence. Well, Stringer overbalanced over Gilzean's body. A throw to Norwich. Briggs. Livermore v Perryman and Perryman winning it. Briggs going in again and stopped by Chivers. Oh, a nice touch on now for Perryman. Brought down and nothing given there by referee David Smith. It's now with Beal. A little lucky there to find Cyril Knowles. Forward this time for Martin Peters. And now for Pierce. Blair, back this time for Livermore. Cross, Anderson. And now for Blair. Played back this time for Livermore. Butler away on the left. Crossed again towards Cross. And again, Mike England just getting above him. Knowles. You'll see. Nice touch up there for Pierce. This time for Chivers. Oh, good. Delicate play close to the body there by Chivers and finding Knowles. Gilzean. Spurs seem to be having the more of the uh, adventurous and inventive ideas. Gilzean for Pierce, who'd come off nicely. Chivers hitting one first time. Good kick by Keelan, hit straight back by Peters, but uh, Chivers was offside. Play on, says the referee. Pratt. Ron Saunders, the Norwich City manager, will be suspecting, I think, that the longer his side can hold out against Spurs, the better their chance will be. Butler and now England played for Knowles Peters Knowles again
Good run by Pierce. And he's going on, but uh, a free kick given to Norwich. It's Chivers thought it was, but in fact it's a throw. A throw to Norwich, Payne with it. Cross. Briggs with the throw back to Payne. Crossed again towards Blair. Blair just looking a little overwhelmed by the occasion at the moment, just a little on the slow side. Forbes going in there, where it really hurt, but he only got it as far as Pierce, who also did nothing with it. Pratt anxious to get it back across again, but it's a pattern now. Livermore, and now Butler. And Blair on that occasion a good eight to ten yards offside. Talk about Blair being uh, overwhelmed, it's a tremendous ordeal for a player coming into this side with Norwich so much the underdogs as well. Beal with the kick. Perriman. Pratt. Letting it go, knowing it's a throw to Tottenham. Chivers. Cross again by Pratt, but way behind that Norwich goal. Norwich, who in their last 12 league matches have gone without a win. Indeed, they've not scored in their last four games. England again, up above them all, but pushing in on the back of Cross. David Smith really on the spot for everything so far. I'm sure he'd want to keep it that way. Stringer then with the free kick for Norwich. Cross will be one of the men that he aims for. England keeping a beady eye on him. Blair leading the charge for this one, in fact getting to it, and Earls hooking it away before Anderson could get in. Duncan Forbes. Knowles again. Pierce. Oh, and it's Norwich again with Anderson. Briggs. Seems to have taken all of a dozen throw-ins already, Clive Payne, in this uh, first 12 minutes. And a bit of an injury uh, down there, Jim Blair. <laughs> Norwich crowd giving us another version of On the Ball City. to these sort of heights, the final as a captain of uh, a first division side at Wembley. Blair is all right. Noel to the throw. Gilsey. Pierce. Hit forward first time, hoping that the pace of Peters would do it for him. Briggs is also well there, but there was a push in by Peters on Briggs. According to referee David Smith. Beal. Peters with a throw. Pierce. Perryman. It'll come for Knowles. Forward now for Pierce. Knowles again. Running into trouble and uh, a rather too violent challenge there on the uh, Spurs player. By Payne. Giving Spurs a free kick. Knowles, who has such an accurate left foot. 
He'll aim for Chivers or Gilzean. England has also gone right in there, but in fact it's low and of not much use to them. Kinnear nodding it back again, and the ball falling for Kevin Keelan. A lot of nervous energy being expended on that bench at the moment. England, again, getting up above cross. Knowles, turning it away towards Jimmy Pearce. Payne getting in so hard and quickly, though, giving Pearce so little room. Peters, forward out of the immediate danger area again, but here's Forbes. Peters again to Chivers. Played for Perryman, nicely there for Peters, and Perryman again. In patches, Spurs playing some beautiful, cultured and confident football. And here's Pratt. Kinnear, of all people, who was way up ahead of him. But Padden was there for Norwich. And it runs for Pratt. Bit of a bundle there between uh, Kinnear and Padden after the ball had gone, but uh, nothing too uh, suspicious, says the referee. Two uh, Norwich strikers, Blair and Cross, caught well offside. Norwich at the moment, as many people anticipated, playing with just two men up. These two here, number eight, Blair, number nine, Cross. And spoiling and fighting and harrying, trying to put Spurs off their stroke in the middle of the field and outside the Norwich penalty area. But here's Beal now with a free kick. Gilzean coming hard for this one with one of those glancing headers of his. Beal back to Jennings. The game really without any sort of rhythm at the moment. One or two flashes where Spurs have interpassed well. But neither side as yet having made a clear opening. And Spurs getting another free kick. Just over a quarter of an hour gone. Alan Gilzean, one of the men that Joe Kinnear will aim for, so too is Jimmy Pearce, as Kinnear takes his free kick for Tottenham. Chivers turning it in, Gilzean hoping to turn it back again. Butler quite happy to let that go over. England again beating Cross in the air. And Blair well offside. Beal again with the free kick for Tottenham. Gilzean, Peters, England. And again, a strange nothing pass there going into touch. Beal pushed by Blair, another free kick to Tottenham. And taken too quickly, Perryman there going in on Livermore but it looked to me nothing more than a an everyday block challenge by Perryman feeling I think that Livermore is making it look worse than it is George Lee the uh, Norwich trainer looking after Doug Livermore now. So now it's Knowles with uh, the free kick for Tottenham. Aimed towards Alan Gilzean, homing in on it. And a goal kick. Gilzean went to the ground. The Spurs crowd behind that Norwich goal felt that the referee was pointing to the spot, but he was uh, indeed pointing back to a goal kick.
England versus Cross. Beale tidying up behind Mike England. Gilzean up. Chivers. And a throw again to Norwich City. The referee certainly pointing that way. So far, things going exactly to Norwich's plan of contesting everything in the middle of the field and not allowing Spurs to get going and hoping for a breakaway themselves. And here's Cross, but he really should have found Padden there. And on the ground, as he turned on that Wembley turf, John Pratt might well have twisted his knee and he wouldn't be the first victim of that sort of thing at Wembley. Certainly Pratt, one of the younger Spurs players too, who is uh, Tottenham's insurance, I suppose, against any sort of complacency amongst the side. He and Perryman were tremendous, the young and ambitious players who will fight so hard today. It's happened before where the studs have bitten into the turf and have refused to give and the knee is gone. At least one must hope that's not what's happened to uh, John Pratt, but it looks fairly ominous. David Stringer, number four, voted uh, Norwich's Player of the Year last year. And I would think Kevin Keelan must be a candidate for it this year. Well, John Pratt, just a little fright no more, a little niggle on that knee. Gilzean now. Briggs getting their head to it. Patton. Butler. And Blair offside. Offside. The linesman was uh, flagging way, way, way before Blair got in his shot. And I don't think there was much doubt that he was offside. And Pratt still with his hands on his knees, still in a fair bit of trouble there. Looking anxiously towards the bench, you'll notice. Here's Pratt again, really is labouring a bit. And I think he'll have to go either off or more for more treatment. England. Peters, a long way back to Jennings. And Ralph Coates already coming on. Just 22 minutes gone. And it looks as though John Pratt is going to be the latest victim of the Wembley turf. Peters header. Stringer against Peters again. Briggs. A bad ball there by Cross. Well, it'll be heartbreak for this fellow who has battled and battled and battled right through the season in the middle of the field for Spurs, his great day of glory. 20 odd minutes of it gone and it looks as though he's got to go off. Beal towards Chivers, he was being pulled back there. Well, that's an incredible decision because he was being pulled back by Duncan Forbes. Coach looks as though he wants to come on now. And poor John Pratt. A tragic moment for him being applauded off by the referee who must realise the feeling out there at Wembley this afternoon. And so Ralph Coates is on. That'll be a slight readjustment in the Spurs side, maybe. Commiserations there from Eddie Bailey and from Bill Nicholson. Blair up well. Philip Beale. Kinnear. It puts Spurs just a little bit under the whip because it'll give encouragement, of course, to Norwich City. Holding his head, I would think, not with the pain, but with the disappointment, John Pratt. Coates. Well, a great chance for him now to make a name for himself. Free kick to Spurs.
Peters is poised as Perryman takes this free kick. Cross right back there, turning it away, but Mike England hoping to turn it back again. Beautifully turned back towards Gilsey. Perryman coming in and Knowles onto the right foot. Perryman now. Skillfully wide there, around Padden to Coates. Back for Perryman again. Now for Knowles. Perryman. Peters. Knowles. As Briggs goes in hard, determined to get that ball, turning it into touch, and Chivers coming over for the long throw. But before he can take it, Knowles has taken it. Pratt going off with the doctor. Now Chivers to take one of his famous long throws. England right in there. So is Gilzine, and so is Kevin Keeler. Kinnear's header. Now Perryman. Pierce. Beautifully changing the course of the play there to find Ralph Coates. Butler backing away. Coates going on. That looked suspiciously out of play from this uh, distance, but the referee with the uh, linesman was directly in line. Pierce, good play. Coates again. The Spurs crowd getting a little irritated, wanting Coates to cross it quicker. But it's another throw, and another Chivers long throw. And again, Mike England has gone in. And in fact, it's almost there, Peters! Nodded away by a couple of uh, Norwich City defenders. And the closest anybody's been to a goal yet. Kinnear with the header, and Norwich with the throw. And now a Norwich player is down, it's Duncan Forbes. Well, Spurs have already lost one of their most efficient midfield workers. The last thing that Norwich would want at the moment is to lose one of their most resolute defenders. Norwich training all off the field, so uh, that throw will have to be taken again. Anderson's back header. The throw given to Tottenham. Peters looking for somebody to make themselves available. And Pierce was a little slow there. But now Gilsey. Payne. Back to Keeper. this one, so too is England Coates Pierce trying a drag back, a little lucky perhaps to get a second go, but now Peters finding Gilzean down he goes, free kick, must be Cyril Knowles taking the latest of these free kicks for Tottenham hit towards Martin Chivers that in fact it was Chivers to blame for backing in on the Norwich number five. Chivers wouldn't agree. And telling Duncan Forbes so. Well, that was an infringement inside the area. The free kick allowed to be taken outside. Blair, England away. Chivers coming hard away from Duncan Forbes and finding Martin Peters. Turned on for Gilzean. And now for Kinnear. Peters away on the right there, but uh, Buckler was hard at his heels. And the free kick given to Norwich. Half an hour gone. And you can only repeat again that it's uh, so far going exactly the way Norwich wanted. 
stifling Spurs every move at the moment with a mass of players in the middle of the field and at the back here's Patton back for Butler cross to Patton inside this time for Blair nice little touch off there he rather miscued there and Anderson was coming in hard both he and Noel slipping and Spurs getting the throw Kicking rather wildly from behind Gilzine, but it's uh, given Norwich possession with pain. The cross again towards Cross, and Patton is going in, and Jennings had to go down. In all the bundling there between Coates and uh, Patton, Jennings went down, saw that ball, somehow got his body behind it. Patton was injured in the melee there, and Spurs were saved by their goalkeeper. Jennings was to know, but the whistle must have gone fractionally before it for a free kick. So far, Wembley not seeing by any means a classic uh, cup final, but certainly an intriguing one, wondering whether Norwich can continue to hold out at this sort of score and perhaps get a breakaway. Coates with a throw, Chivers, straight to Livermore, Coates again, Kinnear, Perryman, Coates, good play there by Ralph Coates, giving uh, Knowles a little bit of room to tee one up towards Alan Gilzine, headed on, and passed, but it's gone off the Norwich defender for the corner, and already Mike England making a move forward. Inevitably, that means that Cross is coming back with him. Here's England. Number nine, Cross right back as well. Short point. Now it's with Pierce. Crossed again, deep towards Mike England. Chivers was up there too. Livermore away. Blair. Coates. Play for England. Gilzine inevitably winning that sort of ball in the air. Now loose for Knowles again. Gilzine going in, and Keelan beautifully there, judging his move. Gilzine is down and injured as well. And at the moment it seems one succession of players going down, rubbing their knees, holding their stomachs. Stringer, the injured Norwich player. Gilzine of Spurs. Still is very much balanced on a knife edge. Beal. Perryman a long way back to Pat Jennings. Butler straight at Coates. Coates to Gilzine and off to Ralph Coates again. Again for Gilzine. Kinnear following in. Pierce back for Perryman. For Pierce again. And now Coates. Back on his heels there. A little slow in starting for that one, and Butler was able to make the clearance. But it's another throw for Spurs, and Chivers already advancing that direction. So another long, 
effortless throw there by Martin Chivers. Lower trajectory that time. Gills in, turning on it! And just as well for Norwich that Keelan gathered that one with Peters and Pierce right on his tail. Tottenham throw. Martin Peters waiting for someone to become available. It'll be Jimmy Pierce. But then he decides it should be Alan Gilsey. And again, Stringer kicking wildly from behind Alan Gilsey and giving Spurs another free kick. Again, it's Knowles with this accurate left foot. Played again towards Chivers and Gilsey going in and Keelan again grabbing it for keeps. Chivers going for this one, but beaten by Butler. Coates. Perryman. Forward for Martin Peters. Inside Briggs. Oh, and he couldn't make up his mind whether it should be Chivers or Perryman who was going in fast. It went between the two. Knowles again. Coates. Already seen a fair bit of the action since he came on a substitute for John Pratt Perryman. And now Pierce laying it off again for Knowles. This looks better by Spurs. Peters going in. Forbes behind that one. And now Patton. Blair versus Beal. And Blair going on. And Beal gaining on him. Good defensive play there by Philip Beal. And Norwich get a corner. So that's brought a new cheer to the East Anglian throats at Wembley this afternoon. Duncan Forbes, the big man, right up there inside the Spurs six-yard area. Stringer is up there too. It's Briggs, the smallest player probably in the Norwich side to take it. Curl towards the near post, a nice back header, and Jennings to grab that one. The back header from Forbes. And uh, the referee having a word with Cross. David Cross presumably lifting his feet dangerously as Jennings went for that ball, but Jennings' catching was so sure. Free kick again to Spurs. Against David Stringer, referee David Smith, noticeable to every decision David Smith gives, he's giving a little signal explaining to the players and to the crowd just what the, the free kick is for, something that uh, could well be followed by all referees, one would think. Butler. Straight up Coates. Tried to get it inside for Chivers, but in his... Pace, he only put it straight to Forbes. Another long throw. And they've caused one or two little bits of bother in this Norwich defence so far this afternoon. Again, a slightly lower trajectory, and it's England this time. Coming in hard all the time, Mike England, for those long throws from Chivers and from every corner that Spurs have taken. Now England in the defensive role. At that time, Cross got his head to it. Peters, Perryman. Chivers, but only giving it to Blair. Blair seems to have uh, controlled his nerves a little bit that were so evident in the early minutes. But Anderson losing it to Knowles. Played forward first time for Gilzine, but he's bound to be beaten for pace by Stringer. Five minutes to go to half-time, still no score in this League Cup final.
A long up and under. England is there, Cross is there, and England couldn't afford the risk of nodding it back towards Pat Jennings. He had to take positive action himself and give away the corner. Cross is right in there. And behind that Tottenham goal, the players are massed in that Spurs penalty area. And Mike England losing out on it, but he must have been pushed as he went for it, because Spurs get a free kick. Gilzine, but a throw. Payne with a throw again for Norwich. Briggs, Payne, Blair again in pursuit. And Beale this time with time to turn it back to Jennings. Ralph Coates, Perryman, Gilzine, played back for Chivers, and on for Pierce, a 1-2 with Chivers, and taken off his feet nicely though by Payne for Norwich. Just when it seemed that Chivers was getting up ahead of steam, Payne was there for Norwich. Offside. Gilzine making it quite clear where he wants it, where he's strongest in the air, but it's Chivers in fact beaten in the air by Duncan Forbes. It'll come back for Gilzine. And a corner. In fact, that was presented to Gilzine by a Norwich defender. It gives Spurs another corner. So Keelan. Might be under pressure again from the likes of Mike England as Pierce takes another corner for Tottenham. High towards Mike England. He got his head to it nicely. Perryman hoping to nod it back. But now Cross. Forward for Blair, the only Norwich man up. Briggs. Cross again. And a throw to uh, Norwich City. Two minutes to go to half time. Peters, carefully back to Pat Jennings. Gilzine. And will Pierce get there? He won't, because Butler was there before him for Norwich. A long ball towards Blair. Touchdown and Perryman in there. Very positive again, Steve Perryman. A long way back to Jennings. Forbes, Blair, to Briggs, Pierce, Chivers getting his head to that one and reacting quicker and being pulled back, the worst kind of professional foul by Duncan Forbes and he's going to be put for it and you can't argue other than that David Smith is absolutely right, Duncan Forbes the mildest of men off the field, I don't know what argument he's got because he was physically pulling Chivers back who was through. So the first name goes into the book, it's that of Norwich's number five, Duncan Forbes. Noticeable how very quickly Chivers reacted to that uh, ball, and it's now Knowles with the free kick, making very little of it, very shallow one, nodded away by Briggs, and now it's with England. Coates, turned inside again for Perryman. And uh, Coates looking out there, hoping that somebody was out there. I think Perryman thought that he should have been. 
Livermore. And certainly with their limited ambition so far, you can only say that Norwich are playing it exactly as they intended to. Filling every gap, giving Spurs not a moment. And at the moment, Spurs just a little frustrated coming forward. There's another long throw, though, by Chivers. Coates. Padden, who's got through a mountain of work in the middle of the field. Blair. Turning it back again, no foul, says the referee, and it comes for Mike England. Skillfully wide there to change the direction of it all to Knowles. Towards Gilzean again. Pierce is going in hard, but Keelan again there. Cross, trying to get away from Mike England. Kinnear. Now England again. Stumbling a little bit, Perryman going in as though his life depended on it, and now England finding Pierce. On now for Chivers. Now can Chivers react to this one? Good piece of defensive play there by Buckler, and it looks as though he might well have twisted his knee on the turn as well. That really was about the first time that Chivers has been allowed to go free. He was almost free when Forbes pulled him back a moment before. Kevin Keenan, who's looked so sure for Norwich this afternoon, said he had two ambitions in football when he started out. One was to play against Stanley Matthews, and he did that when he was uh, way back with Aston Villa, and the second was to play at Wembley, and that most certainly is what he's doing today. Kevin Keenan. And Philip Beale's ambition, I suppose, is to urge Spurs towards a goal now. This is what they'll be hoping to do in the last seconds of the first half with this corner. Gilzean coming away, and England was in there a shade before anybody else. But wide of the Norwich net. Now played about two and a half minutes of injury time. England's header, but he's nodded it straight down for Anderson. Cross has gone storming to the far side of the area, looking for the high cross, and England had recovered quickly enough to get back there and nod it to safety of Steve Perryman for Spurs. Peters, back to Jennings. And there goes the whistle for half-time, with the progress report, I suppose. Frustration in the first 45 minutes for Spurs and everything going according to plan so far for Norwich City. No goals, Pat Jennings without too much to do, one good save there as uh, Patton went through. And Duncan Forbes, solid at the back, as indeed is Kevin Keelan for Norwich, but Forbes with his name taken. Here's Keelan. And so a half-time score at Wembley Stadium that reads in this uh, Football League Cup final of 1973, Norwich nil, Spurs nil, and we shall be bringing you the second half in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back then as David Smith makes sure that everything again is ready for the start of the second half, and this time Spurs kicking off, nil-nil, by no means a classic cup final, we can hope for something maybe a little better in this uh, second half. Coates now for Spurs. Certainly Norwich would, I suppose, be feeling a little more confident than they were at the start. Came here as great underdogs, but they've held Spurs well, they've played very successfully to a plan. And Livermore getting this one away. Blair turning it in, Kinnear back for Perryman. That scuttling run and the pass, but it's accurate there for Knowles. The cross again, this time towards Gilzean. Kinnear the high one. Peters poised beneath it. And this time Stringer again, not really getting it away. Kinnear again, this time for Coates. Well, he somehow muddled his way through it, and it's with Perryman once more. Now with Kinnear. 
And again, the lofted ball there. Gilzine to Chivers. And Pierce hitting it first time on the volley. But without really any power. And a goal kick again to Norwich City. Caelan again with the kick. And England again beating David Cross in the air. Jim Blair to Graham Patton. Cross, or rather Anderson, and now Briggs. He's gone past Peters. Turning again, Kinnear couldn't get a foot to it, but Coates could, not it back again. By Payne. And now Pierce for Knowles. Gilzine and Stringer has stuck to Gilzine the whole of the afternoon. That time giving away uh, another free kick to Spurs. And Stringer, in fact, coming off the worst for wear. If Stringer's kept a close watch on Gilzine, then uh, Duncan Forbes here has also kept a very tight rein on Martin Chivers. But Stringer's all right. Knowles again with that left foot of his. Hitting it straight to Pierce. Another free kick. Certainly the Norwich tackling is quick and tenacious and uh, according to referee David Smith, a fair proportion of it unfair as well. So another free kick. And he wants Anderson to go back the full ten yards. Knowles again. Perryman. Kinnear. Coates. Perryman again, picking up anything that's loose and always making himself available in the middle of the field. It's with Chivers. Played wide again for Ralph Coates. Patton backing off him. Coates getting it across. Chivers turning it towards goal. And Forbes was so close to him all the while that uh, Chivers really couldn't get a clear sight of Kevin Keelan's goal. So it's another kick to Norwich. Payne. Pierce. Gilzee. Pierce again. Now it's opening up a bit for Spurs. Still with Pierce. But a great yellow wall has retreated and it's there now. Confronting Spurs once more as Knowles puts it in. Gilzine, or rather Chivers. Knowles coming in, Livermore there. Knowles again going in, but taking the man as well as the ball. The man being Briggs. And now Norwich get a relieving free kick. David Stringer. And again, beating Cross in the air. Pierce turning it on for Gilsey. Back for his skipper Martin Peters. Forward now into the stride of Martin Chivers. Now can Forbes go with him this time? Well, he went with him well enough not to give Chivers any time. And Spurs didn't even get a goal kick. I didn't even get a corner. It's uh, a goal kick instead. What Spurs are obviously seeking to do is to try and release Chivers with some quicker passes forward to him, hoping that his pace will outstrip Duncan Forbes. England, Peters, Livermore. And now Cross. Butler got Patton away on the left for him. Here's Graham Patton. 
Austin again there. Anderson was trying to turn one way, then turn the other. Blair now trying to get it for Livermore. And Payne is away on the right. And Perriman nicely in for Spurs. But as soon as that Norwich move breaks down, there are so many yellow shirts are back. Two, four, six, eight outfield players, plus Kevin Keelan, again facing Spurs. England again. Perryman. Philip Beale. again away in pursuit from that ball from Anderson playing it back again to Terry Anderson Blair is right up in the area too and Anderson looks as though he can go past Knowles a good looking cross no it was a little too hard wanted pulling back a little more because Blair and Cross and uh, significantly Graham Patton was in there as well here's Anderson what a pace there by the but although uh, nominally they've only had these two uh, strikers up front Norwich, they've always been supplemented by the willing running of Graham Patton. <laughs> Billy Nicholson gets the ball. Rosine only turning it for Max Briggs. Doug Livermore, and now Jim Blair for Norwich. Beale, right back again to Pat Jennings. Lights now beginning to be uh, put on here at Tottenham, but there's Forbes once more at the back for Norwich. Here at Wembley, the uh, famous new floodlights are on. Stringer now with the free kick for Norwich. Beale and Blair jockey for position. In fact, it was Blair who got the head to it. And Jennings had to wait for that bouncing ball and was rather roughly handled by Jim Blair and Wembley now with its lush lights on cross got a push in the back there by England in fact undetected in England with his persistence getting it away to Knowles and now to Beale and safely back to Jennings. Curiously you can see that the whole play bunched into the middle area, nobody really making very good use of the width of Wembley, but here's Pierce now streaking through, but uh, never any real power behind the shot and never a moment of anxiety there for Kevin Keelan. Now Cross, hoping to make things difficult, but a catch again by Jennings. Now Knowles away in space down the left. Played for Gilzine. Free kick given. I think Alan Gilzine is going to be black and blue by the end of the afternoon with some of the treatment he's had from David Stringer. free kick, here's Gilzean, another free kick for Spurs once more with Cyril Knowles whose accuracy hasn't all been that it, all that it might be, but there's Martin Peters Then maybe they, by shouting, can lift the play a little bit. 
Coates. And the ball out of play for a throw to Tottenham. Just over 10 minutes of the second half gone. And still this League Cup final deadlocked at nil-nil. Gilzeen with Stringer close at hand again. Playing it carefully this time for Coates. Onto the left foot again, curling in once more. Forbes very confidently behind it. Coates again. Now will he let one go? Spurs, the red-hot favourites, by now I would think as we get deeper into the second half, just becoming a little anxious, having more of the game, but really not making many chances. And of course Spurs always fearful that in a breakaway, Norwich might pop one in themselves. England again, winning well in the air. Shivers, Coates, England trying to stab it out towards the less populated areas along the touchline, England again, Perryman, Knowles, forward this time for Pierce, Perryman, Peters taken on his body but Briggs was with him, Pierce. Gilzine, nothing given. No Gilzine holding that right ankle in pain. It'll be a goal kick to Norwich. And the crowd now, without too much to uplift them on the field, hoping that somehow they can inspire the players in this cup final. for a Tottenham throw. Chivers trying to hold off Forbes. Now he's got three Norwich players around him. And Livermore taking it into the corner quadrant, which are tactics that are hard to imagine. And a free kick's given to Spurs, presumably obstruction there. be taken from where the ball was standing or where the uh, offence took place which of course was just outside that quadrant Joe Kinnear with it and again the sure catching at the end of it from Kevin King Sort of distance. 
but not far from it. And Spurs have rehearsed their wall all week to make sure that they can keep a pattern out. In fact, the distance is so far that they decided that the wall is not necessary. Gilzine now. Chivers. Oh, he's shown too much of that to Butler. Cross getting up underneath it, and again Mike England there for Spurs. Kinnear again trying to send Chivers on his way. But Butler again. Patton throw. Chivers. Coates. Perryman. Oh, and he might run into trouble, and he has run into trouble. Livermore taking it on. But a foul on uh, Perryman. Tremendous array of scarves there from the Spurs supporters trying to egg their team on as we stand still at nil nil. That'll come for Pierce. Back this time for Knowles. And again the little cross, but it won't come to Chivers. Coates taking it up. And a corner given. Jogging forward, cross again going back for Norwich. And Jimmy Pierce again with the corner for Tottenham. A deeper one this time, England coming in on it, but he never really got to it. Coates. Now a chance maybe for a quick Norwich City play. Livermore to Blair, off for Patton. But Spurs are now back in some strength. Good ball there to Anderson, but he's stopped again by Perriman, who is fighting all the way. Peters, that looked like a nudge in the back, but Norwich kept possession, and the referee, I suppose, was prepared to keep it going. England for Knowles. Perryman. A nudge there, too, by Anderson on Knowles. A long sweeping ball that went between Coates and Kinnear and Padden allowing it to go into touch. <laughs> Coates. Forbes having headed away, Peters heading it in again. Chivers now to Pierce. Now for Peters. Taking on his man and beating him this time. Peters the curling cross. And once more, that strong man at the back, Duncan Forbes, is there. Kinnear. Back for Beal. First time forward again. And this time, Chivers offside. Forbes has had his name taken, but really is a, a great inspiration in that strong back four for Norwich. Patton. Inside again for Cross. Butler and Chivers right back there nudging off Patton with his thigh giving Norwich a free kick Stringer's going right up Forbes is going right up and there have hardly been so many Norwich players up all afternoon only Payne is really back in a defensive position there's really a tight knot of yellow shirts on the far side of that Spurs penalty area and Pat Jennings once more Good swift throw by him as well, sending Pierce on his way, and Pierce has lost the chance. Perryman. Leaving it for Martin Peters. 
Knowles is away on the left. Onto his unfavoured right foot. And Stringer again there for Norwich City. Free kick to Norwich. Arm aloft, indirect. Beal going back to keep an eye on Jim Blair. Clive Payne looking, I suppose, for the likes of David Cross. No Cross wants it in towards the goal so he can make the run, which he's doing now. But again, Pat Jennings is there. And again, a good throw by Jennings, and again it's to Jimmy Pierce. Chivers and Gilzina up ahead. Chivers. Halfway through the second half. And still no goals in this League Cup final. And I suppose Spurs fans, if they're looking for any sort of comfort, is to remind them that exactly the same thing was happening, and certainly Bill Nicholson would remember, two years ago against Aston Villa, when they scored twice in the last ten minutes to Spurs to win it. Knowles. Again, the loose ball to Perryman. Coates. Padden going with him. But he finds Jimmy Pierce. Coates again, taking the return. And now it's with Knowles. Oh, Perryman given very little chance there, but he's still got to it. Chivers turning it off, but rather casually there. And it was a Norwich player getting it away. And it's Knowles once more. Coates, Knowles, Perryman, free kick. For the rather belligerent challenge there by Livermore on Ralph Coates. Again, Stringer watching Gilzean as he knows he must for this sort of cross. Chivers in there as well with uh, Duncan Forbes. Livermore. Blair in for cross. Livermore, played again for Blair. The throw going to Norwich City. Must have just flicked off the boot of Philip Beale. Payne taking it. The little break inside there by Livermore. Anderson is there now on the ball. Crossed again, Coates is right in there too, and Padden was hoping to turn it back. But somehow, it was pushed away there by Ralph Coates. But Norwich get the throw. Forbes has gone in there, so Patton is obviously going to try a long one. Gilzean up above him. Peters trying to hook it away. This could be dangerous. Cross on the turn. And off Mike England. And behind for another corner to Norwich. piece of sustained pressure that uh, Spurs have been under in the second half and indeed almost in the entire match cross again right in there who turned so well there that's a good looking corner as well and again the immaculate catching of Pat Jennings Butler played back for Keelan before Chivers could get in 20 minutes now to go. Livermore. Cross. And now Coates. Well, it's nice to see somebody taking on a defender, and Coates went just as far as he could, and he still found Marty Peters. Crossed again towards Gilzean Pierce. Oh, 
just by no means caught it the way he wanted to, but it came across, and it was some good work by Coates, and Pierce almost turning that in to put Spurs ahead. Had the Norwich fans' hearts in their mouths, but here's Keelan with the goal kick. Beal, Beal in to Perryman, that might uh, give Spurs a bit of encouragement now, Forbes under a lot of pressure now from Chivers, but he's again sticking to it well and saves the corner. Tottenham's throw though, and I think it'd probably be a long one by Chivers, he was already there on the spot, and again Mike England's going forward, again a lower one, Chivers with the back heel, now Mike England hoping to get in, Coates hoping to blast it in, and Coates has done it! Across again and cross goes in. Padden gamely coming up on the outside. Graham Padden, tremendous play by him. And a dangerous uh, overhead kick by Cross, giving Spurs a chance to uh, collect themselves again and get a free kick. Billy Nicholson showing no emotion, but you would really know him never to show emotion. All he wants is more effort. Ronson is a bit disappointing for him. Now he's telling his side to come up more. And indeed, Norwich must open it out now. The stifling has got to stop. And now they've got to make chances for themselves. But as we were saying, and on the ball at lunchtime today, it could well be in a match that is a deadlock, but it is a dead ball situation that could open things out. And indeed, it was the long throw by Chivers that has opened it up for Spurs. Peters with the header. And now we've really got a cup final atmosphere here. From North London, there's nothing but happiness. And now Gilzean with the throw from Coates. Chivers. He played it again too casually and it uh, didn't reach Kinnear. Offside by at least half a streak was Jim Blair. A look of astonishment on his face, but he must have known it. Beal again with the free kick for Tottenham. Gilzean, jumping again, Butler trying to get it away, Chivers there, crossed again and not it away that time by the number two uh, Clive Payne, another corner to Tottenham. Gilzean has sneaked in there on the goal line again, England again has come right up. Peters is in there, so too is Chivers. Pierce again with the corner. The back flick, Chivers, and passed. A move that's worked so often for Spurs, that floated corner towards the near post, the back flick by Gilzean, capitalised by Chivers. At that time, just wide, and another kick to Norwich. Philip Beale back for Pat Jennings. Go 
Wales in. No, stopped again by Stringer. And now Padden on for cross. Blair is on ahead of him. Padden so full of running still. Livermore. Good ball swept wide there towards Anderson. And it was Blair pushing in on uh, Philip Beale. Who gives another free kick to Tottenham. In the last quarter of an hour of the game. And a real Wembley atmosphere now. Chivers versus Forbes. And now with Butler. Kinnear. Stopped by Cross. And Knowles right footed away, but only as far as Livermore. Norwich must come forward now. Patton. Blair with his arm in the air, getting his header down. Pierce thought about passing that back to Jennings. That would have been dangerous. And that at least is safe for the moment, but it's with Livermore. Blair is down and injured in the area. Anderson was right up. And Perryman now to bring it away again for Tottenham. That should set Chivers' legs going. Forbes there with him. And Chivers now on the rampage again. Right foot and straight in to Kevin Keelan. But as Norwich start flinging a few men forward, so Chivers might have a little more room to exploit his pace against that of Forbes. Blair is still injured on the edge of that Spurs penalty area. beginning to take his tracksuit off Trevor Howard and it looks as though Blair might be helped off so when they need a little more striking force it's uh, a striker who goes off Trevor Howard best better known as a midfield player score of two goals this season Having his uh, studs inspected by referee David Smith. Who's had a good cup final, David Smith. And here's Howard. And away goes Blair. as though Duncan Forbes wanted a bit of attention as well before the game goes on. Well, the thought if this went on too long, the referee might well say uh, you're probably well enough to go off the field and have it. And even a flicker of a smile there on Billy uh, Nicholson's face. So Forbes is all right. Padden and Livermore. Briggs stopped by Peters and Norwich now have ten minutes left to save this game. Payne again with the throw. It's almost getting into the area where they've got to take a few risks in order to maybe achieve something. Howard with a nice little back three. Beal and a corner given to Norwich. is coming up, Stringer is coming up the tight marking at the back for them for the moment is forgotten it's a fair looking corner as well and it's a good fist away by Pat Jennings Butler finding Livermore, back this time for Payne and the big men from the back have stayed right up Beal away Pierce oh, and again it's in possession now of Graham Padden for Norwich, a sliding challenge by Peters, still with Padden. A delicate little chip, Beale getting behind this one, Peters getting in there as well, England nodding it away and Spurs not really getting it fully away. Pierce. Briggs. Oh, he turned that back beautifully. England again. And 
there's a little bit of anxiety about Spurs now as Payne turns it in once more, a good one and a very good catch and he's lost it and Perryman winkling it away and Kinnear who finally got it away but Pat Jennings under a lot of pressure there caught it and lost it Coates turning out to be his afternoon as Coates sets off again it's three against three almost now for Spurs and Coates still attacking his man getting in the shot but now Norwich through Jeff Butler pounding their way again towards that Spurs penalty area Kinnear Perryman England Ooh, that was played rather firmly and gave England very little chance to control it Howard then to Patton really is into no man's land and Jennings a quick pick up and a good throw again seven minutes left and that is so unlike Tottenham progressive and positive and that is really very negative play there between Knowles and Jennings oh Beale went in with his boot right in the small of the Norwich players back and Anderson really uh, felt the weight of that Phil Beal boot taken for that sort of assault on the Norwich number 11 but it's a free kick Forbes again right in there Stringer with the kick and in fact he's found either Forbes or England it's Mike England who nods it away but now it's with Patton and a goal kick to Spurs six minutes remaining for Graham Patton and Norwich City to find an equaliser Butler turning it into touch. Clash of heads there between Butler and Gilzean as well, but it's a Spurs throw. Kinnear's gone on a run, but it's left a little bit of space there for Perryman. Now Coates. Free kick. Five minutes now remaining. Perryman with Tottenham's free kick, curling again towards Martin Chivers, but over his head, and once more the faithful Forbes is there for Norwich. Perryman again. Norwich hesitated for a moment there, and it's now with Coates. Kinnear. Oh, he went about three different directions at once then, Kinnear, couldn't really make up his mind. And a free kick, almost certainly to Norwich City. Pierce, Knowles, Gilzean, and again Stringer is tied once more to Gilzean. shot at Pat Jennings Gilzean played there to Knowles the feet all were rather high there but it was six of one and half a dozen of the other and Peters a long way back to Jennings Four minutes left. 
Coates v Patton. A ball bounced uh, favourably there for Ralph Coates. And there it's now with Chivers. Coates really enjoying himself now. Gilzine played on for Knowles. A lot of Spurs players are up, but that'll be Kevin Keelan's ball. Both goalkeepers there. Catching has been superb today. Gilzine harrying uh, Keelan unfairly. Both Keelan and Jennings, their goalkeeping, certainly their handling in the air from high crosses has been absolutely first class. Well, now another Norwich attack set up with Jeff Butler here, but straight at Kinnear. Duncan Forbes. High again there, Cross is homing in on it, but might England away to Kinnear. Butler again. And then finally Chivers sticks out a long leg and it's with Coates once more. Chivers not quite getting to that one, but Peters picking up the loose one and it's with Pierce. Knowles outside it and it was beautifully played there. For Cyril Knowles, the cross all against the post. Chivers, no! Screaming shot there from Knowles, who had scored only one goal previously this season, and he thought a dream was coming true there with another one at Wembley. And so much then for these tremendous underdogs. They've given Spurs a fright or two, so much so that the Spurs fans are already beginning to whistle to give a hint to the referee David Smith but there are still a couple of minutes to go and it's with Butler the number three and a corner given because that must have bobbled off the Spurs defender and it's not all up yet Norwich now piling everybody forward Duncan Forbes right up there if talking could win matches he'd be a winner every week I would think he never gives up Anderson with the header, Howard also trying to get in, but again it was the fist of Jennings, two Spurs players are down, as it's crossed again towards Duncan Forbes, and just a fraction wide. And a little few recriminations in that Spurs defence, Forbes was just a fraction away with that one. Philip Beale was having a go at Alan Gilzean, maybe for not picking up Forbes. And Forbes, I think, sensing that might have been a golden chance that has gone forever. On my watch, we're now in the last minute of the game. It's with Stringer. And Keelan has got to pump another one up. To try and drive another chance towards that... Spurs defence, Philip Beale is right back, so is Anderson right up, and once more Jennings is out. Such a safe and secure figure at the back this afternoon again for Spurs. Perryman. Chivers. Peters going on the overlap and Knowles as well, but it's still with Martin Chivers, played for Coates. What a miserable sight Ralph Coates made earlier this week, training with the Spurs reserves, and I suppose he knew then that his chance of being in the team had gone. But he's a substitute, has come out of it with an awful lot of glory so far. Score of the only goal. England. Coates. Spurs just content to keep the ball now. We're in injury time. Perryman. Knowles. And the ball... He hoped would bounce off uh, cross and into touch, and that is what it's done. And Knowles, as you can see, in no particular hurry. And the referee making quite clear that he will add on time for Knowles being so slow getting that ball. And it's another throw. He's now played, coming up to a minute of injury time.
So it looks to those Spurs with all the frustration they've had against this strong and determined Norwich side. Might well qualify again for Europe. Gilzine turning it back, Pierce hoped to going it in. And certainly it has been an afternoon of frustration, but there's an awful lot to be won because the winners go into Europe. Anderson. Cross again. And cross with an overhead, and he hoped to make that one count, but it fell against uh, Cyril Knowles. Forward for Chivers. The last seconds of this League Cup final now. Knowles, a high ball forward. And that's it! And Spurs have won the Cup that they won two years ago, and they've become the first side ever to win it twice. The only goal of the League Cup final of 1973 going to the number 12, the substitute Ralph Coates. Ron Saunders and Billy Nicholson, the two managers going out. Great respect for each other. And so Spurs have done it. They kept plugging away at that Norwich defence and nobody more so than Steve Perryman. There's a plug for the big match. It was a big match here today that never quite fulfilled all the expectations. But with the likes of Perryman before he went off so tragically, John Pratt. And Mike England at the back and Pat Jennings as well. Spurs just about had the edge. Translated by that single goal from Ralph Coates. Cruising afternoon uh, for number seven, Alan Gilzean against David Stringer. And Mike England, the number five, who was a doubt this morning, played a tremendous game, congratulated by Eddie Bailey. Supreme in the air, unfathomable on the ground. And John Pratt there was congratulating the poor old John Pratt with Eddie Bailey, who went off. of applause from the side who came here and people outside East Anglia said they really hadn't got a chance but the longer the game went on and the more they defended so resolutely and none more so than the man leading them up Duncan Forbes the more they had a chance that was finally squashed by that one fine goal by Ralph Brooks. So Duncan Forbes gets a tankard from there's the uh, Spurs chairman, Sidney Whale, from the Earl of Harwood. Cross with one or two overhead uh, efforts near the end that might have brought something, but never quite good. Max Briggs. Hard luck, Norwich. You put up a brave fight, says the scoreboard, and who on earth at Wembley this afternoon could argue with that? Congratulations, Tottenham Hotspur, winners in 1973. from the Spurs chairman and Philip Beale. Referee David Smith 
always on the ball this afternoon. And his hand signals telling everybody just what those decisions were for. really out on his own that's five times in the last 12 years he's been to Wembley and five times he's seen Spurs win Spurs match against 
Setubal of Portugal in the uh, UEFA Cup next Wednesday night at Tottenham with Eddie Bailey. That says it all.